what brought me to Islam is me trying to convince someone else to become a Christian. So we see how that turned out. <laughs> so I was actually, I was living in Hollywood at the time and I was a production manager for like TV and film, uh, music videos, this and that. And I was very Christian and I, I mean, I was like teaching Sunday school, all this. And there was a colleague of mine that worked on this HBO show with me and he was Muslim. And I was trying to convince him that he should come to church with me so he could, you know, see the truth, of course. And yeah. And he was like, thank you, but I'm not at all interested in that. And I said, well, who cares? It's like, you're not signing a contract for life. Like just come to church one time. It's like an hour on a Sunday. Like it's not going to kill you. If you don't like it, don't go back. And he was like, um, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and so I was like, what the heck? What has him so stuck on his religion that he won't even come for an hour? Like, oh, is your religion that cool? You can't like hang out for an hour? No. So I said, all right, listen, I have a Bible and I can quote Bible verses to you all day long, but it doesn't affect you because it's not your book. It's not your verses. It's not your scripture. What do you care? Okay, fine. Give me your book. Give me this Quran or whatever it is that you're reading your moon and stars worshiping book. And I said, let me read that. And then I'm going to use your text against you to prove to you why none of this makes sense. And this is why you should be Christian. That did not go as planned. And soon after I found myself in a mosque by myself, wandering in with like jeans, ripped jeans, a V-neck t-shirt, flip-flops. And the guy was like, whoa, so I'm like, let's get a scarf on you if you want a tour. So I was like, okay. And before I knew it, I was just blown away by the truth of this book that I was supposed to be using for research only. And pretty soon I was like, I think I know what I need to do. And this is hilarious because I've always thought Muslims are crazy people. You know, I mean, I'm just brainwashed by the news here. And, you know, I didn't know anything about it. I thought they were just doing some like ritual stuff and blah, blah, blah. I didn't know what was going on. And so when I start reading the Quran, I see all these questions that I've had in Christianity for so long, all of them were answered. And I'm like, wait a minute. You guys know about Adam and Eve? You guys know Moses too? What? These are, these are our guys. I'm Christian. These are our dudes. Like, why are you like, you should know about this. How do you guys know? Well, I didn't realize how similar Islam is to Christianity. And I'm thankful that I knew as much as I did because otherwise, had I not known those stories, I would have probably been a little hesitant. Like, okay, you're telling me this guy throws a stick down and all of a sudden it's a snake. All right, okay, no, no thanks, you know? But I already knew these stories from Christianity. So I was like, wait a second, you guys know he parted the Red Sea? Okay, what else do you know? And then it became more and more interesting to me. So after a while I started, I was just like inseparable with the Quran. I was just walking around everywhere. Like I remember just walking all over LA, just walking like a crazed woman maniac with a big backpack on in my little Quran that was like this big and I'm walking and I'm not even paying attention. I'm just reading, I'm flipping pages and I'm walking and I'm walking. I'm just trying to absorb every word. And then I was like, that's it. I gotta go. I gotta move. I gotta get out of here. I can't be here. And so I decided to do the obvious choice and sell everything I own, pack one suitcase and buy a one-way ticket to Morocco. Makes sense. So I did that and I, did, <laughs> I didn't have a job. I didn't have family there, friends. I had nothing, no idea what I'm doing. I don't speak Arabic, I don't speak French, and no one there speaks English. Amazing, good choice. Um, I didn't really know, I didn't really know what was gonna happen, but I knew that I needed to make Hijra because I'm living in LA and it's like, I'm like cruising Sunset Boulevard at night, like hanging with celebrities and living this like glamorous life that everyone wants that I could care less about. So, I said, I got to move. I got to get out of here. And 
especially if I want to become Muslim for real, I cannot do that living in Hollywood. Like this is never going to happen. My friends will never accept this. They'll tease me. I'll just be, you know, just a pile of nothing because everybody's going to be like, okay, what do you some want to be Arab? <laughs> okay, you're Muslim, whatever, let's go out. You know, I knew that they weren't going to take me seriously. So I said, okay, that's fine. If my surroundings are going to change who I am, then if I want to change who I am, I should change my surroundings. So I did that, moved to Morocco and decided to take my Shahada there in Casablanca because I was almost done with the Quran, almost done. And I said, wait a minute, I want to wait. It, it took me like two weeks after I arrived to finish the rest of it. Cause I was like, everything makes sense, but I don't want to take the Shahada and become Muslim because I know what a serious decision and life-changing statement that it is. You don't just like undo it and say, no, I was just kidding. I want to be Christian again. I knew that it was something very, very serious. So I said, well, I don't want to have I don't want to have this book that I'm 98% done with. And then I become Muslim and all of a sudden the last like, you know, chapter and a half, there's some little like, oh, by the way, this, this, and this. And then I didn't want to be stuck. So I said, okay, let me finish the whole entire thing. And then I will take my Shahada. So I did that. That was December 31st, uh, 2010. So it's been over a decade now that I'm Muslim, alhamdulillah. 